is cellular reproduction. So mitosis versus meiosis. Both of these are ways that eukaryote cells reproduce. But what is the difference? Now you don't need to know this like perfectly. You don't need to know every single step but you do need to know the gist of it. So let's go through it. So mitosis occurs when cells split. So mitosis happens when a cell duplicates itself. It can happen in a single cell organism like a protozoa or a bacteria, or it can also happen with other living things when they grow or heal or reproduce. These new cells are identical copies, so they have the same DNA as the first cell. So what are the steps of meiosis? So first you have prophase. In prophase, the nuclear membrane around the cell starts to dissolve. This allows the double chromosomes, which look like X's, to float freely amongst the cell. Spindle fibers, which are like these little spindle fibers, start to conjugate around the structure and they produce a spindle apparatus. So they kind of connect to these little chromosomes and then they're like connected to the end of the cell. And then this will separate the DNA into two separate poles. During metaphase, this is when it starts to pull the DNA towards opposite ends of the cell. And then during anaphase, they start to pull apart these DNA X's into two, like, they're like V's. So it kind of like starts like this and then it gets pulled away in two V's like that. And then telophase is when this process starts to reverse. So the spindle fibers dissolve, the nuclear membrane starts to come back around to create two separate cells. And these two cells and these two cells then go through cytokinesis. And this is again where the two cells are divided by a cell membrane. So now you have two daughter cells. So again, steps of mitosis. We're going through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then cytokinesis. So things that are important to remember, you have those little X's of DNA, the prophase comes in, it starts to let those X's move freely. Then you have metaphase where it starts to pull those X's that are DNA, pull them towards the opposite ends of the cell. The anaphase pulls them apart completely. They're now two separate little pieces of that DNA chromosome. And then telophase, it starts to reverse. They have, you start getting the nucleus around the cells and the cytokinesis is when they are completely divided and there's a new nucleus within that cell. And you now have two identical daughter cells. Okay, so now let's talk about meiosis. This is more complex than mitosis. It has two parts. There's meiosis one and meiosis two. However, if you understand mitosis, it's very, very similar. So meiosis one, there's meiosis two. That's because it goes through two phases of prophase, two phases of metaphase, two phases of anaphase, and two phases of telophase. Prophase one is similar to the mitosis prophase. This is, again, that nuclear membrane starts to disappear. Chromosomes from each parent cell are then able to kind of mingle. During this is when the chromosomes cross over. So a chromosome from each parent bundle together. So you know you have like two chromosomes in the X. So you're getting one from one parent, one from the other. And this is what causes genetic variation. Uh, when you know your child with a parent, this is why the genetic variation, because each parent comes in with two chromosomes and then they swap them but they're not those chromosomes are not identical so that's where we get the genetic variation so then we have metaphase one anaphase one and telophase one which mimic the mitosis it's the same thing so if you understand mitosis one then you understand meiosis one after meiosis one we then have that cytokinesis again where it's separating into two separate cells and it's creating these two cells and they're called two diploid cells where they contain full unique dna it has the 46 chromosomes and again it's a mixture of those parent cells and that's why we get the genetic variation so these two diploid cells then start to go through meiosis two so we have prophase two metaphase 2, anaphase 2, telophase 2, and they mirror the similar process of mitosis. You have those centrosomes and spindle fibers that push apart the chromosomes. And when those spindle fibers retract, the chromosomes separate, and now you have 23 chromosomes in each cell, not the 46. So this results in four haploid cells or gametes that have 23 chromosomes. 
Meiosis 1 is giving us 46 chromosomes in two daughter cells. And then meiosis 2 is then separating those two daughter cells that each have 46 chromosomes into four haploid cells that each have 23 chromosomes. If you want that free 14 page ATI study guide, make sure to grab one down below. If you want the full ATI T's science study guide, you can go ahead and click that link below as well and it will bring you over to where you can purchase. Okay, thanks guys.